Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In today's Automation Minute, we're going to create a SSH client in Visual Studio 2017 that uses a GUI to send and receive CLI commands to our Cisco Ethernet switch and router. First, we will create a copy of the Visual Studio TCP client and GUI that we created in video number 66 that we used for our Xena uh, test set. And we're doing this so we can reuse the subroutines and GUI code so we don't have to rewrite all that, right? Second, we're going to go over the code changes made for using the SSH.NET library versus the TCP client library. Uh, you're going to see they're very similar. Then we're going to do a quick demo of our new Cisco CLI GUI. I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 for my, for my IDE, which uh, can be downloaded for free from Microsoft. All right. A link to the source code and Video Studio project files is in the description below under the video. I'll also post the code and the, and the project to GitHub in the uh, network engineering video blog slash automation directory. I'll put a link to that underneath the video as well. Okay, so in this video, uh, I'm not gonna go over uh, creating uh, this GUI right here, because if you remember from video 66, the exact same GUI as the Xena Tessac GUI that we created. And the, the purpose of it is we, we want to be able to type in CLI commands or this Ethernet switch, a Cisco router or a Cisco Ethernet switch, and, and receive its responses back. And this is the first step in, in automating anything, really. Since it's going to be identical, I want to reuse the code. And to do that is it's kind of goofy in, in Visual Studio. Um, I'll kind of show you real quick. So this is the Visual Studio project for the Xena test set. And yeah, we, we keep getting these uh, scaling on the main display. Uh, we're going to fix this in future videos. When you use Windows Forms, uh, it scales everything by... Um, uh, DPI, which is dots per inch, or, which are which are the pixels on the screen, right? So it's saying that uh, your main display is set to 125 percent. It's going to not look right, and, and you should set it to 100 percent. This is because if you want to make something an inch long, <laughs> and your display is set to 125 percent, it's it's gonna be 25 percent bigger, right? Okay, so back to uh, creating a copy of this. So what you do is you go into project, uh, then you export template, okay? Want it as a project template, click next. Uh, you can give it a different name and you give it a, a, a path, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how to, how to make a project from that template real quick. So you go to file, uh, new project, Here's our template that we just exported, the Xena TCP client test. So you just come in here and you give it a, a different name. I already created this earlier, uh, but we'll go ahead and just make another one called test.1 here. I'll say okay. Okay, so once I basically made a copy of it, then it was just a matter of um, TCP client and the network stream. We're going to use the SSH client and the SSH or the, or the the shell stream, the, dot, the ssh.net shell stream. Okay, and, and to do this, you have to import this uh, rency.ssh.net uh, project. And if you've never done this before, uh, I'll show you real quick. Go to tools, uh, the nugget packet manager, and I clicked on uh, the GUI part. You can use the command line if you want. And then you can just search for SSH. All right. And you can see this ssh.net library by Rency is <laughs> about 3 million downloads. And um, so I, I'm using that. And from what I read on the internet, that's what people are using. In the past, I've used this tamir.sshdll. This thing is dead. It's not being supported really anymore. So I decided to use this, ssh.net by Rency. All right. And then you just click on... The project and and install but I've already installed it so it knows that and that's why this installs not updated 
So, yeah, I'm just going to AB the two. Um, uh, the first AB is a different import. Uh, um, the TCP client used net.sockets, and we're using uh, ssh.net or rinsey.ssh.net, right? Okay, so I kept the same client and stream names as the um, our uh, TCP client. And basically, it's it's the same. I'm, I'm using all the exact same uh, subroutines. So, okay, yeah, so I had to add a username and password to this button connect click subroutine, which is, which is different. In the SSH library, the SSH.net library, I'm using this um, password connection info. And uh, it's kind of a funny place to put it. But this is the only place I could find that you could put a timeout. And that's if, you know, if you can't connect to the server, it times out after five seconds instead of just hanging forever, right? Yeah, the rest of it is, is identical. Uh, the button connect. This is when I just change the labels. And then I just call the connect command and pass that, that connection info object to the connect, connect command, which is the next one on our list here. Yeah, not a lot changed here. We're going to create the, the SSH client instead of the TCP client. Uh, we're going to use a new SSH client, and it's going to get that connection info object that we sent, passed to it. All right. And, um, and then we're going to do a client connect, which is basically the same as this guy. This guy is going to, you know, he uses the TCP. He's going to pass, get the server and port that we pass, and this automatically does the connect for us. The stream is is changed. We had to do a create shell stream. This whole thing has this uh, terminal name, columns, rows, width, height, buffer size. And basically the example I saw online <laughs> was they just zeroed everything out except for the buffer size. So I pretty much just used what they had. Yeah, I also added this, uh, this disabling of the terminal paging. And that's that's specifically for the, the Cisco at this point. What this does, it disables the, it basically disables the more command. Maybe that's, that's the easiest way to say that. And this stream.flush I added. Yeah, so the flush clears all the buffers for this stream and causes any buffer data to be written to the underlying device. And I add that just as a matter of course. All right, and all the rest of this stuff should be the same. So let's go to the button send. So now we should be connected. And I, uh, I replaced the, uh, this byte read and write with uh, the stream write line because uh, the ssh.net library um, supports it. And I find it a little easier than going through all this, um, all this casting, right? Um, I also added the stream flush and basically, after every write, I just add this flush. And I uh, also increased our timer to 1,000 milliseconds. I made a note here. And everything else is uh, basically the same. You know, we enable a, the receive timer. All right. Uh, here's the event handler for the timer receive tick event. And it basically just calls the get response. Is basically... The same. I just took out all this, uh, all this byte conversion from the Xena and and made it all um, where it's reading and writing strings. And then everything else is the same. And the last thing is disconnect. Oh, here it is on the Xena. It's at the very bottom for ours. And I believe that's that's a, that's pretty much identical. I mean. Yeah, these are different objects. The stream and client are are both SSH objects, but but the commands are identical, right? So uh, I did uh, I did remove um, you know one of these exceptions down here, but that's not a big deal. If you want more information on different subroutines and what it's going on, you can watch video number sixty six. You know where it's going over the TCP client, but it, they're they're identical. This is literally a copy and paste, and I just I just changed basically the um, the stream and client objects out.
And, uh, you know, I had to add a couple extra things like username and password and, and uh, the stuff we just went over. But let's look at, uh, let's look at look our example and, and see what it looks like. So here's our, here's our GUI. We're going to go ahead and just connect. Here's that disable terminal paging that we talked about. And here's what it received back. The prompt with the, the command and, and then a new prompt. And at, at first you, you kind of go on, why is it sending me the prompt back? But if you, if you think about it and you go to this, the CLI, right? So you do a, uh, uh, let's see, what's the command for disabling a terminal paging? Oh, terminal link zero. So if we do this command, right? Yeah, it's just basically returning you these two lines because it's it's new, right? And I tried figuring out a way to, um, you know, to get rid of this first line because because really we're just interested in the output. The output was nothing, right? And so let's look at another example. So I do a show clock. Um, we, we get back just this line, right? Without a prompt and, and then our prompt back, right? And, uh, but if you do it in the GUI, where'd it go? If we do a show clock from the GUI, not only did we, <laughs> uh, we get this back, our received <laughs> We just received all this back. So, yeah, we'll have to make a parser later on. You know, th these, two, these two lines will be easy to, to get out. We'll just, what we'll do is we'll put this in an array or, or some kind of list, and, and we'll just tell it, okay, the first and the last entries just delete, right? And that should give us the raw data back. But we'll cover that in another video. So uh, that's about it. Uh, I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in the comments under the video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, that helps. And uh, hit the subscribe button. That really helps. And um, I'll see you next time.